During the war, a number of free ascents, those done without any equipment, were successfully completed on American and other nation submarines. Further testing proved that with the right training, a submariner could survive an ascent from up to 300 feet deep simply by breathing out the entire way to the surface. As a result, the mumps and lung was phased out, and the stanky hood, a hood that protected the wearer's face and provided a pocket of air, if necessary, replaced the mumps in. As the Cold War progressed, and submarines started to operate in the Arctic in areas cold enough to kill a man in minutes, the stanky hood was no longer sufficient. Why escape, only to die of hypothermia in moments, in enemy waters? For this reason, most submarine navies now use the submarine escape immersion equipment. These all-in-one suits provide an oxygen hood for free ascent up to 600 feet deep, plus a one-man insulated life raft to allow submariners to survive on the surface until help arrives. While most navies developed something resembling the mumps and lung for their submarine forces, the British had the Davis submarine escape apparatus and the Germans the dragger lung, Mumpson and the American Submarine Force were the only ones for years to have a rescue chamber to transport submariners from depths beyond what it was believed the human body could endure. The chamber was primarily replaced in the 1960s by the Deep Submergence Rescue Vehicle, or DSRV. The American military had two, Mystic and Avalon. They were deployed aboard modified mother submarines, which somewhat limited their reach and range capability. These vehicles are now being replaced in turn by the Submarine Rescue Diving Recompression System, based on the Australian submarine rescue vehicle, Remora. Named Falcon after the submarine rescue ship which saved the Squalus submariners in 1939, the SRDRS consists of three components, two of which are currently active. First, a diver in a one-man diving suit capable of reaching 2,000 feet deep descends to the stricken submarine and checks her for damage, debris, and anything that could endanger the rescue vehicle. Then, the Falcon itself descends and locks onto the sub's hatch. The Falcon is equipped with a spherical transfer skirt, which allows her to link to a submarine that has rolled as far as 60 degrees from the vertical. Taking 16 submariners aboard, the Falcon then returns to her mothership on the surface. The third and final phase of the system, due to be operational by 2014, includes a direct transfer lock, which will allow those who have been exposed to the high pressures underwater to transfer directly from the Falcon to a decompression chamber without exposing themselves to the normal pressure of the surface atmosphere by walking from the Falcon to the decompression chamber, as they must do currently. This extra step will allow submariners to decompress slowly with no risk of injury or death due to the bends. The complete SRDRS system can be shipped via air, sea, and road, and used aboard any vessel of opportunity capable of handling her launch and recovery specifications. Most countries already have several commercial research vessels that fulfill these requirements. In 2008 and 2011, the Falcon, along with her Italian, Swedish, Russian, and NATO counterparts, took part in a triennial multi-country exercise off the coast of Norway in Spain. In simulated disasters, these submarine rescue systems practice seeking and rescuing submariners from other nation submarines, including the Netherlands, Poland, Norway, Turkey, Russia, Portugal, and Spain. Each of these bold monarch exercises practices for the day when one nation's rescue system may be needed to help another nation's crippled sub. While rarely used by the USA, Mumson's rescue chamber is part of the American Navy, and it, along with the Falcon, is still a valued component of the submarine rescue chamber flyaway system, which, in an emergency, can be deployed around the world now. The escape trunk, now highly modified from its 1930s configuration, allows for not only escape and ascent, but for personnel to leave and re-enter a submarine from underwater. Like its predecessors, it is still configured to attach to a DSRV, or recompression system, proving that Mumson's ideas are still inspiring new means of saving submariners the world over. <laughs>